Thomas Ravenel was once a rising political star here in South Carolina after his stint as a state treasurer. Now he's a reality TV star. In this special edition of Quentin's Post Ups, I speak exclusively with him one on one. Thomas, here we sit inside your home in downtown Charleston. Right. And you have been making headline news over the past couple of weeks. That's true. Uh, one of the headlines that I read was this Catherine Dennis, Thomas Ravenel used drugs and hangs with porn stars. Another headline, Catherine Dennis Fields drug test gave me Thomas Ravenel leg up in custody debate. Thomas Ravenel and Catherine Dennis's family court battle begins today. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to take you back to my first interview mm -hmm. with you on March 11, 2013. The second to the last question I asked you was this, are you at peace? You told me this quote, no, I don't think so. I think I'm a little restless. I'm wrestling with, you know, what I want to do with the rest of my life. As we sit here right now, Tell me, what are you wrestling with right now? Well, I think I've discovered over the past couple of years that um, the most explosive substance on the face of this earth is estrogen. Think about that one. <laughs> Based on what you just read. <laughs> you know, I'm in a difficult position. You know, my, my first and foremost priority is my children yes. and I'm concerned about what they think about their father and a large part of that is how I treat their mother okay. and so when I, I'm talking about her sometimes it's best just to say nothing and wait for the moment to pass so I'm going to just say no comment. smile and just Next question. Sure, which is, talk about the Southern Charm really union, reunion that is. Uh, obviously that just happened a couple of days ago. You tweeted out that you were on set with a couple of the castmates and there were rumors that you wouldn't come and then you would come and then obviously you showed up. Take me back down memory lane and tell me what memories play back in your mind of being on set of the reunion. Well, when I was on the set of the reunion, I, I, I talked to a therapist because I had a lot of emotions and I wanted to control them. And um, she told me that, you know, you, if you really want to accomplish anything in life, you have to get control of these feelings. Feelings are to be felt because that could be based off of a, um, a negative belief system. Let's say your father tells you you're stupid or something. It's, it's false, completely false. But somebody could say something, hey, dummy, and the next thing you know, you have a feeling which is based off this false belief system. And then uh, the feeling creates a thought, a negative thought, which creates an action. When you do something really stupid, the action is stupid because it's based off of a uh, stupid uh, a thought that was incorrect. Okay. Thought came from a feeling that was based off an incorrect belief system. So it all escalates, but if you just sit on the feeling, sit on your emotions, they shift. And then clarity enters the fold and then you get true clarity and you can make good decisions and so what I've been trying to do is just listen to my inner voice my intuition you know I asked the preacher one time would I listen to my heart or my head he said listen to your head and, you know my therapist said no the head's crazy you know it has all these crazy feelings and thoughts and emotions that are generated by the heart and you have to listen to that inner voice inside that's God talking to you. That's the true north. And, you know, I don't want to um, say something that would, that would um, provoke her to hit some tipping point. I mean, she's a little hormonal. She's a little, you know, she just had two babies. You know, she's a little hormonal. She's a little temperamental. She's um, angry. She's bitter. You know, I'm going to have to work with this woman. Uh, she's the mother of my children. And, uh, but, I, but I, I'm in a difficult spot. You know, there's some untruths that are being put out there about me. And at the same time, I don't want to speak ill of the mother of my children. So sometimes it's better than to say nothing. Well, let me ask you this. You know, when we spoke back in 2013, you talked to me about your prison time, and you told me that it wasn't really tough for you. I'm wondering, how is this with the kids and your mother, how is that making you really a tough person? Mm-hmm. Well, it's really forced me to change my behaviors. You know, for example, once the court gets involved, you know, they drug test you. But it's not drugs because I'm not doing anything right. illegal, but alcohol is a legal drug. 
you know, so they test and see if you drink too much. You know, a lot of times if, um, that's what's crazy to me, say marijuana illegal, because people will just substitute with something that's far worse, alcohol. Okay. And you can come home stumbling drunk every night and take an Uber and, and that's perfectly legal. But in the court system when you're raising children, you know, that's, you know, most fights, most arguments, most domestic violence is the result of violence right. uh, caused by alcohol. Cops will even tell you that, you know, the only thing that somebody smokes a lot of pot abuses is, is a bag of Doritos. You know, they don't come out and beat up your wife. So, I, you know, I have to be a responsible person. You know, I, I can't go out and hang out and drink or do anything. You know, I have to be, I, you know, if I do, I'll lose my kids. And um, Catherine, you know, she unfortunately has not passed the test. Um, so, you know, as everybody knows, That's I'm, right. not, I'm not, not speaking ill. This is a matter of public record. They right. refuse to seal the record. That's the right. Judge, the judge, I mean, it's, it, it's amusing because the people that they're not supposed to seal the record for are um, elected officials. Yet, because <laughs> the way our state is set up, the, the, the only people that are getting their record sealed are elected officials. Mark Sanford, who was governor, had his divorce record sealed. Um, a couple of other elected representatives of being, having their records sealed. Right. And her logic, the judge's logic, was that, um, and I don't want really to get in an argument with the judge, was that, well, you've already hurt your children by putting them on TV. I was told that, you know, before they reach the age of two years, they're unrecognizable, and you're not really harming them, they're unrecognizable. And I said, you know, from here forward, Kenzie just turned two a couple of months ago, I won't put them on TV. Okay. And she said, well, you've already exposed him, so we're not going to seal the records. So her logic was, you've already harmed him, so I'm going to continue to harm them by allowing these records to be unsealed. I, I, I didn't understand her logic. Mm -hmm. But the records and the nastiness, and it, it'll just turn into a yeah, circus show. So I'm hoping that uh, I can work something out with Catherine. Well, I thought we had something uh, worked out in, in writing. And... We were operating under this uh, agreement, which had not been signed. We had forwarded it to her attorney, and um, then her attorney came back and said, you know, we want to make changes. You know, we I haven't signed it. You know, both attorneys signed it, and then you sent it to a judge, to, and it's a court order. Uh -huh. and, but they haven't signed it, so apparently they're nigging on, on, on that. And, um, and it would require that we get a mediation, we mediate it. And it's all done in private, and we work this out. But you know, and I, and I told her that, and I told the world. I, I said it on TV that you know I want to do more, and it'll be it'll come out in the ring. I want to do more than what's fair, you know, because I'm concerned about you know, how, you know how I treat you know my children not treating their mother well. You know, it's not a matter of um, you know doing the minimum or trying to. You know, find the minimal point, but to find out what's what's fair, and we've given them um, all my financial information, and there are people that do extrapolations, and um, whatever that number is, you know, I want to give her more. But and we've offered her that, but they've never have a counter had a counter proposal. There's never been a, you know, she went on TV and said, sort of talking about all these expenses, but. I've never gotten a number. There's never been a counter proposal, and I would like to resolve this. And um, yeah, let's put it behind us. You know, what's most important is that um, you know the kid are the kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. Catherine and I, the age gap is so wide that that um, it lends itself to a lot of disagreements, a lot of arguments. And it's not healthy for the children to be in, a, in an environment where this negativity is emanating their environment. Right. You know, it's, it's not good for them, it's not healthy. And I think they will do far better um, being with, with each of us individually rather than us together. But, um, you know, were we able to work it out, you know, I would have ignored the age gap, but um, it was
was just it was just too volatile. It was, it was too. We have a very combustible relationship, and um, I really, I really, absolutely want the best for her. She, cause she's the mother of my children. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I mean her no ill will. And um, right now we're incommunicado. We're not talking. And unless there's an emergency, you know, uh, with the kids, you know, I'd write to email or text her. But um, yeah. we, we made agreements not, not to talk to each other. And um, so I, I'm not sure where we are. Yeah. You know, you know. I thought we had an agreement, but then we don't have an agreement. You know, you know, we're going to court, or we're not going to court. I'm just not sure where 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 things stand right now. It's it's, it's a very emotional, very sensitive topic, and uh, I probably have already said too much. Yeah, I think you did. Southern charm. The last time we spoke once again back in March 2013, you just got out of prison. Um, there was no such thing as Southern Charm. So I'm wondering, what got you from being a rising political star to a state treasurer to going to prison, and now here you are, a Hollywood star? Uh -huh. well, I don't know I'm a Hollywood star. I'm just a, <laughs> I mean, it's a reality TV. <laughs> yeah, it all got started. There was a guy, local, okay. Charlestonian, he wanted me to meet a fellow by the name of Whitney Sadler Smith. He was a film producer in LA. And I kept telling him, you know, I really don't know if I want to meet this guy. And the guy I wanted to go out and have fun. He's a single guy. And my friend is married with children. So, you know, I can have a drink with you, but you know, I'm married, I have kids, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna uh, meet, with, meet with you for one drink. But hey, I know a guy who's single. And, so he called me, wanted me to meet this guy, and I was reluctant at first, but then he mentioned that his, um, his mother, Patricia Alshaw, and I'd heard her name, and she's friends with a mutual friend of mine, her, she's a lovely lady. Right. And I said, well, yeah, if it's Pat's son, you know, I'll be happy to meet with him. And then I met with um, Whitney, quite educated, quite um, interesting individual, well-traveled, went to school at Oxford in England, and, and um, you know, he came up with this idea, this crazy idea to do this show, and as far, his, his vision of it is far different than what Bravo turned it into. Right, right, right. He wanted it to be sort of a, kind of a down alley meets, gone with the wind meets, um, I don't know, uh, Andy Griffith show, I don't know. He had all kind of crazy. He wanted it to be more of a documentary or a docudrama. It's a little bit of drama, but more, you know, more about Charleston, Charleston charm. And of course, you know, the people in, in, uh, that took it over, they made him talent and they had a rule that an executive producer, which is what Whitney was, he came up with this sizzle reel and sold it to Hollywood. And one of their uh, terms and their agreement was that uh, once you're talent and they forced him to be talent, that you would have no editorial control whatsoever. Yes. So, and another term was that the mother also had to be on the show. Okay. And uh, they tried to get one of my siblings on the show, uh -oh. and they called her about a hundred times. And, and she was very polite and said no. And, and then I think at the hundredth time she's just like, "What part of no? Did you understand? Do you not understand?" Yeah. yeah. And uh, so she was having no part of it. Wow. And then the, uh, the scissor reel leaked out. It went viral, and a couple of other uh, Charlestonians backed out. They were under so much familial pressure. Wow. And I did not cave to the pressure. I told Whitney I'd do the show, and I did. Did they back off because of you or because of what was portrayed in that little reel? In the little reel, it was uh, very scintillating. Mm. You know, they, they take, you know, a um, hundred hours and they basically condense it down to the most outrageous 10 seconds they can find. Right. And then everyone says, oh my goodness, this is too... But if you watch it, I mean, it's not that crazy. But if you can, you can take two seconds out of anything and make it wild. And that's my next point because, you know, you hear locals saying, hey, Southern Charm doesn't portray Charleston. Then I have tourists come up to me saying, well, you know, we love Thomas Bravenel. He's awesome and this and that. And they don't know what the real Southern Charm is. So what is Southern Charm to you? Uh-huh. 
Well, I think a lot of it is is um, yeah, it, it's mostly reality. A lot of it's reality. There are a lot of dots out there, and they have to connect dots. Right. And some of the connective tissue, I would say, would be uh, some creative editing. Okay. Yeah, of course. Infer <laughs> from that what you will. I'm really not at liberty, but they right. have to. Yeah, we've got all these dots and all these events. How do we tie this all together? And there's a lot of suggestions that, hey, why don't you ask this character uh, this question? Then, you know, it might be interesting to see this person's response. You sort of tie it all, you know, create a theme, create a little plot. Right. And, and there are some things that are going on, and, and a lot of it is real. But some of it is, is sort of, made, you know, a little manufactured, you know, but not totally manufactured. I mean, you know, you can fantasize in your own mind that perhaps this could be going on when in reality there was nothing there. I mean, like the same with me and Landa, I mean, she and I are friends, and right. absolutely nothing. Okay. You know, it was about, you know, oh, he's sleeping with Landa and her, you know, it's, I mean, no, you know, I've never, you know, just merely friends. Right, right. I did run into her over in London and we took a couple of pictures and we posted them and it was her idea, you know, create a stir back right, home. Right, right, right. But it really created a stir, you know, uh, with with Catherine. And then she made a bit, and she may just be rolling with it, right. you know, I know that it's nothing. Right, but, but in order to get airtime to create a big argument, I don't, I don't, I'm not privy to every single conversation right, that right. goes on. Right. But, you know, if we want to get the ratings up, you know, everyone wants to maintain their job. And I, and I feel a little bit of that, too, you know. It's, it, I like to think of it as integrity. You know, I'm being paid, you know, a lot of money per episode. And I feel obligated to, you know, generate some ratings. You know, yeah, yeah, I, you know I offer some wonderful words. <laughs> You know, they may be, I don't know, I don't know, they may, I'm assuming that they could be coached to push back a little bit on okay. that. You know, okay, first thing, everyone just sort of took their medicine, because I kind of did it on my own. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, season three, I'm going to do uh, a dinner party, well, you know, you know, the executive sort of like you know, how you handle that season one, right. she offered a few more words of wisdom, and by the way, we, we have some, you know, we could, we could give you some suggestions, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So, you know. <laughs> now, did they suggest you jumping out the window? Because I saw it, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that was totally me. Wow, well, okay. Because I walked in there under the impression that the list was all approved by Catherine. Right. But it was not. Yeah, she, I think she, I, and maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> they told me it was, right. and that there was going to be no pushback, of course. She saw Landon's name on the list, and then maybe she decided to uh, push back regardless of, because they told me when I, walked, when I walked in there, and I said, I mean, I was more angry not at her, but at production. I was like, oh, you know, come on, I don't want to have an argument over this. this is, yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought this was, I, I made it clear I was not going to um, go in there with Landon on the list. They said, no, 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 she's approved this, she's okay with the list, she's just going to discuss the list. And then when she saw her and heard Landon's name, right. it was pushed back, and I was, I was not so upset with her because I knew that would, I wouldn't have gone in there had they not told me that, hey, it's good, you're, you're good, you know. Yeah. Because I just know, <laughs> you know, I know Catherine, but I'm, and I was a little surprised, maybe I was duped. You know, that's the thing, you know, I'm a little trusting mm. sometimes, whether it be the government or, you know, big business, NBC, Universal. Uh, a lot of times, Whitney, they ask him to do things and he just, he tells them where to go. Oh. Like the dinner party. Right. You know, I called and invited him. Yeah. And, and they make it look like he wasn't, I told Catherine, they said, oh, since they aren't invited, you can tell Catherine that you did invite, that they're not invited. The case was that I called and made them knowing they weren't coming, but <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. So um, they both declined on the invitation, Yikes. but I told Catherine that uh, they weren't on the list. Wow. So, well, you talk about government.
haven't been. I mean, there's so much going on here in South Carolina. Are you keeping up with this? Yeah, I keep up with it a little bit. Not, not a whole lot, you know. I was, you know. The big question is, do you miss being in politics? Because, like I said, you were the rising star, Thomas. Uh, yeah. You were. Um, I just think that uh, you know, I'm getting older now, and uh, you know, I think I really missed my chance with um, that little incident that happened with uh, season two. Right. I think had I gotten what I was polling, 15, 20 percent unseated Lindsey Graham, you know, I would have been the comeback kid, and that would have positioned me for a um, maybe a shot at the seventh. Uh, congressional district in Myrtle Beach. Right. I think I could have gone up there and beat beat Tom Rice. Oh yeah. I think that. Um, but you know, with that little incident, you know, and the allegations were completely false. And then, but the girl took the video. I mean, you know, what people don't know was that was I let her in my house, and then she took that video six hours later. I went to bed. I woke up at like six in the morning. Heard someone's talking. I went downstairs naked and she took the video but the way it seems as though she came in the house and I was walking around naked. Right. No, I heard someone in my house, I ran down there naked she took a video of me right. and I should have called the cops on her because I asked her 50 times please leave my property. Right. You know, you're, you're trespassing now. And she said, well, um, you don't own this house and I said, well, you're not paying the rent. Right. You know, when you rent a house, you have uh, the right, you get a bundle of rights, one of which is a um, quiet enjoyment. Right. Not some interloper who's in your house and won't leave your house. And so, um, it, it's just all unfortunate. I mean, that's the thing. Anybody can go to the police department, make an allegation against somebody like me, someone who's well known, and it's not just from top of the full front page of the local paper, but the, the state, the national, the international paper, the Daily Mail, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. And that is one thing about the show that's different from politics. Mm. You know, I used to be able to leave South Carolina state border and regain my anonymity, total anonymity. But now, I can't leave the state border or the national border. If I go into Canada, people know who I am. If I go to England, Australia, people from New Zealand, right. any English speaking country is watching that show. Yes, around the world, Thomas. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm known all everywhere, you know, everywhere I go. I mean, I had some guy running down the street, Thomas Revenant! <laughs> and it's a British accent. Right. And then when I ran into you on, on King Street, what was it? two weeks ago when I first started archaeology, I ran into you at Kenny and Calhoun at Starbucks, and some guy came up to you and he recognized you instantly. Uh -huh. Is that a downfall, or is that something that you have come accustomed to? You know, I've always been accustomed to it at a local level, but when I'm in New York City, if I'm walking into, let's say, the Standard Hotel, walk over to the, to the bar and every head, you know, the bar, Turns, you know, I was right. <laughs> it's Thomas. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm like, what's kind of odd is I'll go in there with somebody like Whitney and they'll ignore him. Oh. And they'll want my, you know, they'll recognize me, but all that, he, he's, you know, his executive producer. Right. I don't know if he gets as much airtime or as, as, as uh, and, and that, he, can't, he gets a bad rap also because he's my biggest defender. Mm. You know, he's like, I'm out there defending you. Right. And, you know, I'm catching a bad rap, I'm this mean, evil person. But, um, but I do think, you know, you know I, li I like Whitney a lot, but, you know, I'm, I'm a little protective, you know, the mother of my children, you know, even though, regardless of what she may say about me. Right. Is, and, you know, I, I just think it, it's sort of, there's sort of an in-group, out-group mentality that we as human beings have. You know, we haven't evolved at that point where, where we get away from that. Where, whereas, let's say, you know, somebody in my immediate family can say something about Catherine, but if somebody outside the family says something, you know, I'm a little, a little defensive. You know, there's a little protective streak there. Um, you know, I'll bad mouth her all day, but you better not bad mouth her. 
exactly. You know, it's kind of that kind of story. Yeah. It's different. So, well, you, you know, you told me. I guess. Oh, yeah, it's been three now, three years now. But you told me this: I will never fully pay my debt to society. What have you done to pay back society as of right now? Uh huh. Well, you know, my goal was to promote the ideas I believe so strongly in um, civil rights, equal rights. I mean, I know it's just with this uh, custody case that, you know, this gender um, discrimination. Okay. Because she's a woman, she's the mother, she gets full parental rights unless I get the court system involved. And that's because, you know, back in the day when they were... Shotgun weddings, you know, if a man and woman were had a child out of wedlock, you better get married. Right. Otherwise, the woman would have all rights. The man has zero, and he could be the greatest guy in the world, or she could be the worst person in the world. And that's not fair to you know, basically say you have all the rights to the children just because you're a female. You know, what if this person is incapable or unfit? Or as downright being, um, you know, engaging in child neglect, not watching her children, not taking care of her children, and the husband is his saint. You know, not to use my son's name, but his saintly. It's ridiculous. I mean, so we're seeing discrimination. We, I mean, we made tremendous gains. I just read his book, uh, *The Profundus*, with uh, Oscar Wilde. Right. He wrote this book. Um, from prison, he was in prison for being gay. Wow. Um, I mean, African Americans 30 years ago, well, we had these Jim Crow laws. And they want to blame that on states' rights. The reality is, we had this horrible slaughterhouse um, decision that came out of the Supremes, federal government, Supreme Court, the judiciary branch, not through federalism. They eviscerated the 14th Amendment, you know, which is post Civil War. Right. Uh, amendment to the Constitution, which extended our uh, Bill of Rights to all 50 states. But, uh, so I have a lot of good ideas I thought that could help the country. I mean, lately, you know, I'm just trying to be a good citizen. You know, I make contributions um, for, the, for the, you know, better treatment of animals. Oh, good. And Whitney does likewise. I mean, he's got a, you know, a little spinoff from this is this nightclub, and at the end he does the little sign off was a five marker, please spay and neuter your animal, like your cats or right, whatever. Right. So, you know, yeah, that's another, I, I have an interest in, you know, um, but I mean, we see what's going on in Venezuela, right. you know, failed system, the oil curse, people are starving, people are dying in hospitals, children are, babies are 100%, they're 100%, 100 times more likely to die now than before Chavez, you know, inter introduce all his reforms, which eviscerates the private sector and puts the government in charge. But the government, they, they destroy the private sector, and the government is totally reliant on oil. Of course, the price of oil is has uh, plummeted, and so there's no money. And people are, you know, uh, inflation rate is I don't know, seven hundred percent. You know, and the, and the people that are running the government are, you know, a bunch of Castro. Um, you know, disciples, and, and they basically say, tell the World Bank, tell all these world organizations that everything's fine, deny what's going on. And because if you do, then you, you're basically admitting that our model is wrong. Of course, the model is wrong. And the model depends on the price of oil being high, but it's like destroy the private sector, you know, and just live off the oil. So, you know, and I study history and I think I can help the world with some of these ideas because you know, we, we don't want to end up being Greece or you know, Venezuela is really the worst example I can think of right now. But, um, but you know, it, because of I think what happened, you know, the likelihood that I could make a comeback is very slight. But they say never say never. You know, if I can get my personal life in order right now, I'm going through this big struggle with my children. They're my main priority. I just say, you know, I have a, a moral, a sacred obligation to ensure that uh, they have a health, healthy and happy lifestyle. And, and um, toward that end, you know, I need to make sure that, you know, I'm on the straight and narrow. And, you know, I, you know, I've kind of 
changed my lifestyle a little bit. That's awesome. Well, uh, this slides me the following one word. Thomas Ravenel, right now. Thomas Ravenel in one word. Right now. How would you describe you these days? Philosophical. The philosophical. Um, it's hard to do in one word. Change. Change. Philosophical. I can give you two words. Sure, that's fine. Uh, another seven charm season. Um, I, I don't know. About that. <laughs> Thomas Ravenel, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh